Our next talk is going to be by Sumi. It's called Internet Access and Voice over IP as Commons, Open Commons Infrastructure. Sumi, oh, Sumi? yours. Thanks. Um, I'm talking to you about the, the cryptic subject of Internet Access uh, and VoIP as Open Commons Infrastructure, which, mean, which means uh, my personal absolute incomplete overview of what is out there and my personal wish list of what I would like to be there. Um, so first of all, I'm going to try to improvise some kind of definitions because I haven't found usable ones anywhere. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples of what is out there. Uh, my view on what works, in which aspect, and what doesn't. And my personal wish list here, it's called Perspectives. <clears throat> uh, I haven't found any suitable uh, definition of open infrastructure. Um, in analogy to free software, I would say that you should be able to use the infrastructure for any purpose you should be allowed to understand how it works, what it's comprised of, etc. You should have the freedom to extend it uh, and the freedom to improve and, and modify it, um, which is kind of more difficult for infrastructure than for software because you can easily um, destroy the workings for others while you improve it for yourself. So there would probably need to be some restriction on that. An example would be the, the PICO peering agreement, um, but which used in, in Freifunk context and other mesh networks, um, but this focuses very much on the, the traffic and the routing information and doesn't really cover anything above, above that scope. Um, for commons infrastructure, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the, the concept of commons economy. Let me, let me see a few hands. None. What, one. Okay. <laughs> so, um, then I'll take, take a bit bigger turn here. So, uh, commons originates from the commonly used land in a community that belonged to everybody and was, everybody was free to use it. And in commons economy uh, is trying to recreate new commons. So uh, without barriers to access and not in uh, private property of, of any entity. Uh, with different means like uh, companies used by, uh, owned by the employers, by the customers, um, like constructions where you have formerly private entities owning things in order to fit into the capitalist system and then you try to um, take the control out of these entities and into the hands of the end users again. Um, so that would be uh, my short definition of commons infrastructure would be that resources should be accessible to all members and that the owners should be identical to the users and or employees, admins um, that use and run the infrastructure. The uh, prime example is in, in this context would be uh, Freifunk, respectively the Austrian version of Funkfeuer for open infrastructure. Um, I guess most of you are familiar with it around here. And um, do I need to explain Freifunk to anybody? Fine. <laughs> so uh, what I found notable about it, it's that it has never grown much around uh, Germany and Austria and that though it does provide all kinds of services on the network, most users actually use it for internet ac access and not much more. Uh, GUIFI, if I pronounce it correctly, 
is uh, like of my, my most beloved, most favorite example. Let me add on that point that uh, above Freifunk, I don't have very much experience with these communities um, at all. So if there's somebody here for, uh, from one of these communities and I'm talking complete bullshit, please feel free to correct me. Um, this is kind of a mixture, um, mixture between open infrastructure and commons infrastructure. So you can build your own stuff, add it to the network, offer whatever you want. But you can also uh, pay a company in order to set, set that up for you. Um, it's quite, quite large, around uh, 40k active nodes around 50k k kilometers, no, what, what mega meters, 50,000 kilometers um, of Wi-Fi links, um, some uh, diesel and fiber links. Um, also here, mostly internet access uh, and largely limited to uh, Spain, Catalonia. <laughs> um, what I've included here, though I know basically nothing about it, about uh, some of the members, is um, FFDN. That would be an example of kind of common infrastructure. Um, it's a federation of non-profit ISPs. Um, mostly never has grown out much, uh, much, never has grown much out of the borders of France. But, um, yeah, this kind of uh, representing the interest and also uh, helping with the infrastructure of, uh, like, community, small community ISPs. Mm. What I like very much, though I <clears throat> know even less about it, is uh, Telecomunicaciones Indigenas Comunitarias. Yeah? <laughs> Uh, who offer GSM networks in rural Mexico to mostly indigenous communities. Um, at the moment, as far as I found out, uh, they probably have 16 communities with around uh, 3,000 users. And the nice, nice thing about it is they are able to offer their service for less than two euros a month, which is really important in these communities because the income usually is... Uh, even below 200 euros a month. Um, what we are doing is telecommons, also kind of a commons infrastructure, um, with a VoIP service to mostly kind of um, eco-villages and um, um, housing associations and this kind of uh, communitarian living Thingies, um, also some um, commons economy uh, um, organizations, um, jointly owned by users and employees. And a special feature is uh, solidarity-based economy, it means everybody pays what they deem adequate, uh, doable, yeah, what they, what they feel it should be worth paying for them and what they can afford. Everybody gets the service they need uh, independent of their payments. Um, so my vision is that open infrastructure has been quite successful. Um, its limit is it seems to me that projects tend to uh, not grow out of one region or one language. Um, which also makes some, some sense in, intuitively. Um, and for pure open infrastructure, you mostly have kind of a nerdy prosumer base, like people who also actively um, develop the network, administer it, and uh, kind of their friends and family as a, a consumer base who get their support uh, by these nodi admins. Um, and that judging 
mostly from uh, Freifunk experience. There's a workshop about that right now over there. Um, my, at least from, from development of the Leipzig community, but I, I think it works in general, is that the, the success of these networks is largely dependent on uh, the alternatives of access. Like if some ISP comes along and provides um, high bandwidth links for low cost, then you will have half the user base will be gone. Um, uh, on the other hand, if you have a um, rural community where uh, people definitely need more access than they can easily get, um, there will be a chance to grow a community. So uh, for commons infrastructure, it's a bit different because you usually have smaller projects. They usually tend not to go, not to get that big at, as open infrastructure. Um, but you have quite a stable development. I've never, well, not never, but um, I don't hear much of, of commons infrastructure projects that uh, tend to just vanish or uh, shrink tenfold in size. Um, however, they are also usually regionally and socially quite limited. Mm. And what I'm, what I'm asking myself is uh, if there wouldn't, a way, wouldn't be a way to combine these two in a, in a sensible manner. So <clears throat> from a user perspective, I would like to have the, the availability and reliability of a managed infrastructure. And also, um, I would want not to uh, exclusively, not to, I wouldn't want to have to be uh, really tech savvy in order to be able to, to join the network to use the services. From a political perspective, I, which, is, which is these two are easily fulfillable, fulfillable by any commercial provider. Uh, from a political perspective, I would like to have uh, openness in the organization. means uh, that anybody can, can easily join and, that, um, and transparency on how it works, how it's financed, um, what is needed, um, and to have it be extensible so that what works in one region can easily be uh, deployed in another region that new people can come in and can take part. Um, and the same from a technical perspective, to, um, that the infrastructure is transparent. It's, uh, of course, it's uh, built from open source components and um, that anybody can understand it, can add to it, etc. So my personal wish, personal wish list would be um, to have alternative ISP and VoIP services available, available for, let's say nationwide for the moment. I would love worldwide um, with professional management and support and where users can choose their degree of involvement. Um, this is, uh, how much time do we have left? Um, we, I have one idea in which direction it may go. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Mitzhäuser Syndicat, maybe some of you. Who's familiar with Mitzhäuser Syndicat 1, 2? Um, or with uh, DFN, the provider of the German universities? Well, no. So my, my idea would be to have kind of um, small independent organizations who can be flexible, do uh, what they want, be regionally present, um, and then to have on the top layer somebody who can provide uh, high infra infrastructure with higher costs, uh, juridical... Um, 
background, etc. And also um, to provide some kind of a, a template on how to go forward if you want to found your own ISP for your five friends. Um, and to have some kind of dependency between the two layers so that um, uh, neither the, the center body nor some satellite can just wander off and do uh, crazy stuff on surveillance, uh, alt-right, don't know what. This would be kind of my vague idea where I think this might be fulfilled. Um, I very much hope that you have either other ideas on how it could be done as well, or ideas on how to work that out in detail. And there I would invite you to uh, join our workshop, which will be at the dome right now when this one finishes, or also just to meet up right after the talk, um, maybe here in, in direction of the bar, so we can share, share first ideas. I don't know if we still have time for some open questions. Okay, thank you, Sumi, for this talk. Um, we have a couple of minutes talk. Um, so we have a couple of minutes left for questions and answers. Do we have something from the internet? Internet is pretty mute. Anybody here in the audience interested in uh, some more details or a question? There is one. I'm going to go there. Um, how does one get started doing something like this on his own region? Um, can, can you repeat it? How does uh, somebody do that on his own? How do, how do you get started doing that? Is that right? Uh, you don't get started on your own. <laughs> it's, uh, you need at least... Um, but there, there is... Um, I didn't count them. There's dozens to hundreds, uh, really like community ISPs and uh, lots more other small ones that um, I guess would be definitely interested in such, a, in such a structure. So if you think of something useful with uh, three people and put the concept out there, I think chances are not so bad that it will pick up speed. Okay. Okay, thanks. Another question? Okay, I want to thank our talk, our speaker here, Sumi, with a small present from the OIO stage. Um, yes. Here we go. Something to drink mm -hmm. and something sweet. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. There we go. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs>